Hey YouTubers, I got a set of AFR LSX 245cc cylinder heads that I'm going to do a final assembly on. Um, these were heads that were just getting cleaned up from previous usage. Uh, having them surfaced, checking the valve spring pressures, verifying the valve spring installed heights to uh, make sure this thing's going to run like we want it to. <clears throat> um, the valve springs, they were within five pounds of what AFR specs them at. Um, I'm assuming that's just from, you know, settling from, previ from previous usage. But one thing that's different is on their website, AFR lists these valve springs installed height at one, one inch, 810 thousandths. But as assembled with their locators, titanium retainers, and uh, bead locks, they're coming in at one inch, 793 thousandths, <clears throat> which ironically puts it up to, uh, you could safely run up to a 670 lift cam. And the seat pressures, if I remember correctly, was about 155 pounds, which is what they originally, <clears throat> excuse me, rated those springs at one 810 I uh, I don't know I find that kind of not possible but it's less likely that they were still getting 155 seat at, at 1 810 I don't, I don't know I haven't seen a set of springs that did that but uh, whatever spring they're using could be totally different so anyway enough time wasted let's see what we can do all right guys off camera what I did was just go ahead and blow the head out real good Ran a bottle brush through all the guides just to make sure they're perfectly clean. Blew it again with the air because I want to make sure there's no pieces of rag, no uh, bristles off the bottle brush, nothing of that nature inside the valve guides or the ports. Uh, I went ahead and used a, a clean red rag with a little brake clean sprayed on it and just kind of wiped down the bowls and the seats and the areas that I want to make sure are perfectly clean and seal to each other. So what I'm going to do now is, and this is something that people mess up all the time, always remember, put your locators on before you put your seals on. Now, in some cylinder heads, you can remove the seals and normally not hurt them, not mess them up or bend them or whatever but in certain cylinder heads you literally can't remove them without tearing up the got the seal well the last thing you want to do is be right in the middle of trying to get a set of heads done and uh don't have you don't have the seals or you're missing one that would be <laughs> that'd be the worst case scenario all right now i wash these titanium retainers and the lo locators that they sent these heads out with, I washed them with denatured, or not denatured, uh, low, order min low odor mineral spirits. <clears throat> and that stuff doesn't dry as fast as you, as you think it would. So if you get a little too much leftover residual, go ahead and dry that up. I mean, it's gonna dry on its own, but I don't wanna send it out the door all sitting in the retainers because these are deep cup retainer design. Um, <clears throat> next thing I'm going to do is install the BTR valve seals. Uh, they're pretty easy to install. I went ahead and years ago bought the, gosh, I think it's ICT billet seal installer for the LS because, I mean, I used a 12 millimeter uh, 12 millimeter 12 point socket for a long time but when you use this tool it goes on pretty easy you don't have to hammer it on or do anything goofy like that but what I do is I just get them started on the top where they're kind of square 
then I take the tool and then I'll take one or two hands depending on how stubborn they're being and just press them on. I'm gonna go ahead and install the rest of these. I'm gonna move forward in the video so it doesn't waste space. All right, to put the valves in the head, and I, I stated earlier, I've already wiped all these down. Uh, it has a nice little gray, because I did take the time to lap in every one of these valves because I want 100% certainty that these things are gonna seal and create the performance that the customer's looking for. But I went ahead and wiped everything down. Everything is clean. My guides are clean and has the initial lube in them. But what I'll do is I will take this valve. Now again, I've already pre-wiped this valve down. It's ready to be installed. And I will just put a line of STP or engine treatment, whatever you're using, on one side of it. Okay? Then I'll take my fingers and just lightly spread that lube over the whole stem. Set it down, grab the next valve, and what's left on your hand, go ahead and put on the second valve that you're gonna do. Bring them over here, start them in the guide, go slow, because when you hit your, you don't wanna just ram them in all at one time, because you don't wanna root, Try to take that chance of hurting your valve seal. So I just boom, work it through the seal. Grab the second one. Get in in the guide. Go past the seal. Boom. Now I just got to repeat that six more times. And then we'll flip it over and start messing with some valve springs. Alright, so we got all our valves in. We've tried to wipe them off and keep all the dirt and debris off of them. Now what I use, and you can use whatever you want, I just take a shop rag, clean shop rag, fold it up into a tight little triangle, shove it in the combustion chamber, and then set the head down. That's gonna hold your valves proud or hold them to the seats so that you can start putting these valve springs in. Now these other ones, they might seep down, they might slide down. Don't let it bother you. Don't let the head come off the workbench though, because you don't want that valve to fall all the way out on the floor. But they should stay pretty much where we want them. Uh, here's the tool I use. This is my homemade, we'll call it the HFI valve spring compressors, which I did have to modify to work on these AFR heads because I had never used this tool on this style head before. And it's got these thick, I guess, reinforcement ribs right here. And it wouldn't allow my tool to bolt down. So that was, that was interesting. It's an easy fix, but you know, something I've never run into before. Now these are some, you know, like I said, these are 670 pretty high pressure springs for a LS. So they're really tall. So when I go to put this thing together, what I'm gonna need to do on my, my homemade, my homemade two. So what I gotta do is fit this in and get this thing started by hand. Of course, I'm gonna do it the wrong way when I'm making a video. There, get this thing started in the locator. What I try to do is just kind of eyeball it. We'll start bringing it down. That way, if we need to make any adjustments, see, it's coming down pretty straight. Just come down far enough to get your locks in. Now, what I do. I don't know if everybody does this, but it helps me a lot because I'm a fumble fingers. This has a really high high quality bead lock set up or locks. They're made to lock in a lot tighter than your regular locks. But what I do is I put just a little bit of bearing grease on it so it causes a suction. So what you'll do, of course I'm gonna mess it up for the video, 
but you put just a little bit, just a little bit of bearing grease inside that lock, get it into its receiver groove, and then rotate it halfway around, if that makes any sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this one on, but I'm gonna rotate it halfway around, and then I'll take the other one and come in with just a little tap, you know, just a little bit of grease and get it put on. All right, let's see if we got that in its groove. All right, we're gonna rotate that around. Of course, it's fighting me, but I'm gonna keep going. I'm soldiering on for you guys. Let's see, make sure you got your fat part up. Be surprised how many people complain when they go to put locks on and they say, oh, they won't fit. There's something wrong. The lock is uh, beveled. It has a fat side and a skinny side, which all of you are going to know. But I'm just telling you, there are funny circumstances. Get it in the groove. Rotate it around. Make sure it stays in there. Cause she'll try to pop out and slide down and that's always a good time. So, put a little grease on this one. And I know you guys might be thinking, well, gosh, see like right there, putting on the second one, I knocked off the first one. That's fine. Cause now the second one becomes the first one. Stick that in the goo, pinch it together a little bit so it's happy. And we'll grab our trusty Makita. Go slow, don't just zip it on out. Now remember, I gotta, I always, on these springs, I gotta back it almost all the way up, not quite flush, so that I'll be able to fit through there the next time, so. But you'll notice any extra grease will get squished out around the locks and the valve stem. And then you can just wipe that up, no problem when you're done. Of course, when I'm done, I will also tap all these with a dead blow to make sure we get the locks locked. So now what I'm gonna do for the sake of the video, I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna take a pause for the cause and I'm gonna install the rest of these valve springs and then we'll go from there. All right, guys. All the valve springs are installed. Give them a little tappy tap just to make sure. Make sure them locks are tight so that way they don't come back and bite you in the butt. So, now we have two fully assembled cylinder heads. I'm happy with the way they turned out. I'm happy with the, the way the valves, even just lapping them in, they were very concentric. The valve and the seat had no pitting, no issues with a good seal. They should do a good job in this crazy turbo combo we're build, he's building. I can't wait. I want to see how it runs and hopefully makes the power that he's looking for. But I appreciate you guys watching. I'll try to put in some more pictures and uh, video. I'll put together a decent little video here so you can get an idea of what these ports look like. You know, 245 cc intake ports. <laughs> it is absolutely huge. These, uh, Version 2 AFR 245's flow 360 CFM. So it's got more than enough head flow to do what he wants to do. Now we just got to get them on the engine, get them in the car, and put some boost to them and see how they like it. Hopefully, hold that head gasket. Athena, we're going with Athena head gaskets. You guys uh, Google that. That's That's not cheap. Please like, subscribe, and share. Stay tuned because there's more to come.